I'm Bill Mays from the Crumb Church of Christ, and it is my honor to welcome you to this time of Bible study provided by the Crumb Church of Christ. We thank you for taking the time to be with us, and I'd like to mention that with the email that contained the link to this Bible study, there was also an attachment and is an outline of this study entitled, Two Ways to Walk. This study continues our study in the book of Philippians. It is lesson number 14. And so before we begin uh, our lesson of two ways to walk from Philippians chapter 3 verses 17 through 21, let us now take the moment to read our scriptures for the day. And so here we find Philippians 3 starting with verse 17, brethren, Join in following my example and observe those who walk according to the pattern you have in us. For many walk of whom I often told you and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite, and whose glory is in their shame who set their minds on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform the body of our humble state into conformity with the body of his glory by the exertion of the power that he has even to subject all things to himself. Now our purpose in this study is to learn how to walk as a citizen of heaven and not be as an enemy of the cross of Christ, as we heard mentioned in our scripture reading. As we continue our examination of Paul's letter of joy, 
we now find him discussing these two different ways to walk in this life. One, the walk of one is the walk of those whose citizenship is in heaven, and the other is the walk of those who are enemies of the cross of Christ. Hopefully, there should be no question as to which way we are to walk, but to better understand why, we will look closely at some of the reasons Paul gives in the scripture reading of Philippians chapter 3, verses 17 through 21. So first we notice, join and observe. And we go to Philippians 3, verse 17, where Paul writes, Brethren, join in following my example. You see, Paul frequently encouraged others to follow his example. We find in Philippians 4, verse 9, Paul writes, The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. In 1 Corinthians 4, 16, Paul writes, Therefore I exhort you, be imitators of me. And then in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1, be imitators of me just as I also am of Christ. Some brethren evidently took him up on it, for we find here in 1 Thessalonians 1, beginning verse 6, you also became imitators of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much tribulation with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Acacia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Acacia, but also in every place your faith towards God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves report about us what kind of reception we had with you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God. So, in what way were people to imitate Paul? Well, it was to the degree he tried to imitate Christ. Again, we have 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, where Paul writes, Be imitators of me, just as I also am of Christ. Perhaps also in his devotion to Jesus, uh, inspired others to follow his example. For we find here in Philippians 3.7, Paul writes, But whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as lost for the sake of Christ. In Philippians 3, 17, we read, But observe those who walk according to the pattern you have in us. Just as there were some in Thessalonica who imitated Paul, as we find in 1 Thessalonians 1, verses 6 to 9, so there were those at Philippi who did the same and were thus worthy of imitation. Noticing the good examples of others can be very beneficial. As we find here in Psalm 37, verse 37, Mark the blameless man. Behold the upright, for the man of peace will have a prosperity. We should especially notice good examples when we consider the outcome of their good conduct. Note here Hebrews 13 verse 7. Remember those who led you, who spoke the word of God to you, and considering the result of their conduct, imitate their faith. We should not only be good imitators, but good examples ourselves. This is especially true of those who teach and preach God's word. Paul wrote to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4 verse 12, Let no one look down on your youthfulness, but rather in speech, 
conduct, love, faith, and purity. Show yourself an example of those who believe. Then Paul wrote to Titus. In Titus chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. In all things, show yourself to be an example with good deeds, with purity in doctrine, dignified, sound in speech, which is beyond reproach, so that the opponent will be put to shame, having nothing bad to say about us. Concerning the elders, we find in Hebrews 13, 7, Remember those who led you, who spoke the word of God to you, and considering the result of their conduct, imitate their faith. Then in 1 Peter 5, verses 1 through 3, Therefore I exhort the elders among you, as your fellow elder, and witness of the sufferings of Christ, and a partaker also of the glory that is to be revealed, shepherd the flock of God among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but voluntarily according to the will of God, and not for sordid gain, but with eagerness, nor yet as lording it over those allotted to your charge, but proving to be examples to the flock. Leadership and example bring challenging responsibility to all individual Christians. The reasons for noting those who are worthy of following their example is given later in this passage. But first, there is warning considering or concerning those who walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. And we look again at Philippians 3 verse 18. For many walk of whom I often told you. You see, Paul found reputation, uh, rep, repetition to be a valuable tool. As an example, in, First Galatians, or in Galatians 1, verses 8 and 9, he writes, But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what you have, have preached to you, he is to be accursed. As we have said before, so I say again now, if any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to what you receive, he is to be accursed. And then we have in Galatians 5 verse 21, envying, drunkenness, crousing, and things like these, of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And in Philippians 3, 1, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things again is no trouble to me. It is a safeguard for you. Sometimes it was necessary for people or for Paul to be negative towards others. And so we find that here in Philippians 3, verse 2. Beware of the dogs. Beware of the evil workers. Beware the false circumcision. We continue on now in uh, Philippians 3 verse 18 where we again look at Paul writing, And now I tell you even weeping. Negative preaching when necessary should not be done without compassion. As an example, 2 Corinthians 2 verse 4 for out of much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote to you with many tears, not so that you would be sorrowful, but that you might know the love which I have especially for you. Even here, Paul setting the right example to love our enemies, even those who are enemies of the cross. Looking again at Philippians 3, verse 18, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. We know that there are many people who choose the wrong way to live. In Philippians 3, 18, we read, for many walk. 
In Matthew 7, verse 13, 14, we are taught to enter through the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter through it. For the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life, and there are few who find it. We know the end of the unrighteous. In Philippians 3.19, whose end is destruction. We also find in 2 Thessalonians 1, verses 7 through 9, and to give relief to you who are afflicted, and to us as well as to the Lord Jesus, when, or us as well when the Lord Jesus will be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire, dealing out retribution to those who do not know God and to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. These will pay the penalty of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. I wonder, have we seriously considered the outcome of unrighteous conduct? Well, we know who is their God. Here in Philippians 3, 19, whose God is their appetite. These are individuals who are set on satisfying only their fleshly appetites. Selfishness is controlling their choices. We know therefore what will be their glory. For we found in Philippians 3, 19, and whose glory is in their shame. In other words, they take pride in things that are actually shameful. We also know what they set their minds upon. We read in here in Philippians 3, 19, who set their minds on earthly things. Now let us contrast what we see here with where Christians are to set their minds. And we go to Philippians 4, verse 8, where we find, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence, and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. In Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2, Paul wrote, Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on the things that are on the earth. Where is your mind set? How we answer that question may determine whether or not we are enemies of the cross of Christ. As a motivation not to be enemies of the cross, we notice that Paul now shares a few reasons to walk like Paul in others. And here we are taught in Philippians 3, verse 20, for our citizenship is in heaven. Our true loyalty is to that which is above, not what is here on earth. It is there where we have our inheritance. It is reserved in heaven. We find here in 1 Peter 1, verses 3 through 4, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Therefore, we have special responsibilities as taught here in 1 Peter 9, or 2 verses 9 through 12 we read but you are a chosen race a royal priesthood a holy nation 
a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly lust, which wage war against the soul. Keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles, so that in the thing in which they slander you as evildoers, they may, because of your good deeds as they observe them, glorify God in the day of visitation. We learn here in Philippians 3, verse 20 and 21, from that which also we eagerly await for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform the body of our humble state into conformity with the body of his glory by the exertion of the power that he has even to subject all things to himself. Though now in heaven our Savior is coming again one day, we find here in Acts 1, starting with verse 9, reading to verse 11, and after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. And they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you and into heaven will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. When Jesus does come again, what a wonderful glory will be there for those who have their citizenship in heaven. For he will transform the body of our humble state. It will be in conformity with the body of his glory. This Jesus will do the same, or will do by the same power by which he subdues all things to himself. We find in Matthew 28, 18, and Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. You see, Jesus is in charge. We find in 1 Peter 3, 22, who is at the right hand of God, having gone into heaven after angels and authorities and powers had been subjected to him. This is our Jesus, our Lord and Savior, the one who is in charge. Now, are not these good reasons to walk like Paul? I ask you, how are you walking in this life? Are you walking as one whose citizenship is in heaven? Or do you find yourself walking as one who is an enemy of the cross of Christ? Folks, that's the wrong way to walk. The answer really depends upon where we have set, your, set our minds. If we have set our minds on earthly things, then we are enemies of the cross of Christ. We make our bellies to be our God. We glory in that which is shameful, and our end will be destruction. But if our minds are set on heavenly things, we have our citizenship in heaven and we eagerly await Christ coming again. We eagerly await our transformation. And so, is your citizenship in heaven? If not, why not become a citizen of heaven today? You can contact the Crumb Church of Christ and we will help you do that. We are taught in John 3 verse 5, where Jesus states, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. 
I ask you, have you been dwelling with the enemies of the cross? If so, why not defect today? As we find in 1 Peter 4, verses 1 through 3, Therefore, since Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves also with this same purpose, because he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, so as to live the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for the lust of men, but for the will of God. For the time already past is sufficient for you to have carried out the desire of the Gentiles, having pursued a course of sensuality, lust, drunkenness, carousing, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. You see, Peter is trying to encourage those that had left such sin to continue walking in the right way. I plead with you, please learn from the mistakes and sins of others. It will save you so much sorrow and grief when you choose to be on the Lord's side in your daily Christian life. If we in the Crumb Church of Christ can do anything to assist you in any way, that is our purpose. We beg of you to contact us at the Crumb Church of Christ at the website uh, address you see there. There you will find our email address and let us know how we might help you spiritually. God bless. Let us conclude our time in this Bible study with a prayer. Dear God, we pray that you will help us always to walk in the right way. Help us, Father, to walk on your side, not on the side of the world, but the side of the devil. Father, forgive us of our sins. Help us be pleasing in your sight and forgiving of others. We love you, dear God, and we pray these things through your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We wish you the very best. We hope that you'll be with us in a Bible study like this as we continue our study in the book of Philippians again next week. May the Lord be with you always. And now we say goodbye.